Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, Sixers. It is time for another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is episode 129. Today is February 13th, 2023. I'm Bill, and I am joined, as always, always by my prognostic, prognosticative co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. I don't, don't understand why you tripped over that word. It seems so simple. Hush you. I say it all the time. It's, it's part of my daily vernacular. Before we get started, we want to remind you that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. Thank you, Jordan, for fixing my intro. I didn't stumble over it this time because it's actually fixed in the notes, and that is thanks to Jordan, my wonderful co-host. That means that if there is something in the Cosmere that you haven't read and you are worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first, then come back and join the discussion. Tonight, we are discussing and speculating on the future eras of the Cosmere. And this discussion will be led by Jordan. I should throw into our normal, uh, you know, we're not a spoiler for free podcast. We're also going to be talking about the intro to Six of the Dusk 2. Mm, the, that the one hasn't been released. That. So, yeah. okay. That is good. Good to know. Yeah, just good just warning. Yeah. Out there. So basically, we're not just spoiling stuff that you may not have read. We're spoiling stuff that he may not have written. So. Oh, and the Gavilar <laughs> flashback, that too. Oh, yeah. I'm doing All great. Things. Awesome. So uh, for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or you watch the videos on YouTube after the fact, we do run want to remind you, you can actually come join us, interact with us live via chat as we record uh, at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes every other Monday night. We start at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. We would love to have you join in and just join the chat, interact with each other, Try and throw us off with you know your you know all the comments from the peanut gallery. It's great. You you, you should really come and join us. Uh, the show is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. It will of course continue to be free. But if you want to help us out, head over to Patreon.com/slash Cosmere Studies. A buck per episode even is just super helpful. Helps us as we continue to work to improve the show, improve our equipment, improve everything about it. Um, Patrons do get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere. We've got a bunch of great people over there. Uh, it's a great community with a lot of great discussions. We're over there chatting as well. Um, you also get early access to bonus episodes. You get exclusive access to other bonus content. And there's other stuff that may pop up from time to time as well. Now, it is time for the Cosmere Thing of the Week. So, Jordan, can you pull up this week's Cosmere Thing of the Week? I can do that. It's true. Okay. This is a picture I came across. It was actually a collaboration between two people on uh, Instagram. There is Jesse Chen Liu, and she did the line art for this. And then I have no idea how to pronounce it. It's Lamary in the Cosmere. Lamary, Lamary. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that. I, I apologize for butchering your name if you're listening. Um underscore in underscore the underscore Cosmere. We'll have the text on the, um, uh, the YouTube notes. version. Well, and it's in the show oh, notes as well. Oh, okay. Um, so they did this uh, back in October for Cosmere Inktober 2022. And the prompt was T. And Boba T. I love this. I, I don't know. There's something that's always fun to me about bringing in uh, characters from fantasy stories or science fiction and having art of them in a modern setting. I don't know. I just, I just enjoy it a lot. And this is just a, such a cool image. You've got uh, Kaladin and Adolin and Shallan, and then they're attending, uh, or they're they're just leaving a Boba cafe called Boba Gancho with (laughs) uh, the, the Lopin in the background, just, waving them up, grinning and waving them away. It's giving good customer service. Such a cool image. Yes. Yes. Um, so for our audio listeners, you should definitely check it out. We'll have a link to it in the um, in the show notes. So definitely go check that out. It's like how how suffering Kaladin is in this. Yeah, <laughs> it's his lot in life. 
And, and Adolin just has absolutely no qualms about, he's just like, okay, this is how, this is what life is. It's fine. <laughs> and then you just have a little ball of sunshine, Shalon, in the background. Of course, she's mm-hmm. got, a, you know, in, inside she's a tangled mess of emotions. But on the outside, she's a happy, cheerful ball of sunshine. And it's just wonderful. That's great. All right. So moving on to Sanderson News. Unfortunately, again, Brandon moved his uh, his news reports to Tuesdays. So we're going to be a little bit behind in- instead of right on the cusp of things moving forward. I completely understand why he did it. It's so his staff could actually have a weekend totally worthwhile. Um, so but so this news, though, is a week old. Um, so there was originally supposed to be a live stream with Howard Lyon, who did the art for Tress of the Emerald Sea. Um, but that has been postponed. Hopefully it's going to sh- end up happening sometime this month. Keep, we'll keep an eye out for announcements on that. Um, Brandon is now done with his third and hopefully final draft of Defiant. And that means that he is now working on what, Jordan? What, Amy? Uh, What's he working on right now? Come on. Stormlight 5. There we go. for t-shirt. Wait. Wrong thing. <laughs> no. no. Um... So he is working on Stormlight 5 until the end of the year. He'll t- probably take a little break at some point to do one more edit of um, Secret Project number four. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I am, I'm excited because, I mean, this is the book that we've been waiting for for 12, 13 years. Oh, goodness, It'll, a long time. Um, yeah, I'm tw- 12, somewhere between 12 and 13 years, I'm pretty sure. Um, the commercial editions of Tress of the Emerald Sea will be in stores on April 4th, which means pre-orders are now open for them. So if you want to go check those out, uh, you you should. They have received their second shipment of the uh, the Tress. deluxe editions of Tress of the Emerald Sea. Um, and they're you know working on shipping those out. And they're waiting for the third shipment. As of a week ago, they may have gotten them in since then. Um, they're currently working on the March box, packing it up to make sure that it's on time, as like they did with the February box while they were waiting. So Tress has definitely been delayed. I'm hoping this doesn't happen for all four of the books, but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, let's hope not. Well, I, d- I doubt we're going to have uh, snowstorms that blanket an entire half of a continent. Mm. <laughs> In like July. All, all Yeah, all year yeah. long. And then, of course... Uh, the most important bit of news that we got, Brandon, when he works out, he wears a Bridge 4 t-shirt. <laughs> so he apologized for recording this one in his uh, his gym clothes. There were some comments in the in the video that were people just saying, this is obviously a Kandra disguised as Brandon because he doesn't have the trademark blazer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's why those so. live streams are fun to watch. Did I just say Kandra? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of Kandra. I was gonna okay, I was gonna let it uh slide, but now that we're here, how dare No, you? it's just one of those things where I just stop and I look back and I was like, why did that come out of my mouth? Did I say that? Did I? Did I? Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Anyway. Well, without further ado, I'm gonna hand the reins over to Jordan because he's probably gonna steer things a little bit better than I have uh today, because <laughs> true I, I don't I don't know how to pronounce Kandra. So. You have come to me for help. Before um, Jordan starts real quick, I'm going to give the disclaimer that I'm sorry if I if I suddenly go quiet or if you hear me sound really weird because I am recovering from a cold. So. She's probably hacking up a lung. So you should really check out the video version if you want to get the <laughs> full experience. And you just watch me lean out of screen and then I lean back in and it's fine. It's fine. That's it youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. There we go. All right, so um, this idea just came to me when I was thinking about the fact that we now have uh, a couple of books, like a good, a hefty chunk of books now that are in what we would call Stormlight's future. The future, the later Uh, era. Yeah, because we we know for, so for those, if you're not familiar with the timeline, we know that Era 2 of Mistborn happens, uh, is is it confirmed it's going to be in between uh, the two halves, or just after what is uh, Mistborn Era Two is between the two. It is going to be between the two. Okay, yes. I couldn't remember if it was between going to be concurrent okay. with the second it, it, one. Yes, not. the Mistborn Era Two happens between Stormlight Five and Stormlight Six. Yeah, okay. and then we have Six of the Dusk, which is in the far future. Mm-hmm. Six that... of the Dusk Two, which is further than that. Yeah, and then we don't know where Tress of the Emerald Sea is. My guess is even further than Sixth, personally, just because of the tech that we see in it. I would but say 
possibly not necessarily yeah it's, and, it's, and no, the no only guarantee. the only reason we can't really confirm is because we don't see hoyd in six of the dusk correct yeah and so it's just that's just my guess but the point is those are in the very far future mm-hmm. all three of those yeah. uh projects so there, yeah uh, I I just realized, you know, I was like, oh, we should try and see what we can figure out about uh, book five's future looking at these books. So I, of course, uh, decided to start us off by going actually into the past with the Gavilar flashback yeah. and undercut my forward. entire thing. Um, the the only thing that I, I really want to discuss with Gavilar, if you guys have uh tangents you want to go off on mm-hmm. um if, if again if you haven't read the gavilar flashback um you learned it released, back. yeah <laughs> but it brandon released it and it, it's you know it's not in its final state that it'll be in but i it looks pretty ready to me yeah it's it's, um, it's worth checking out gavilar uh we find out you know a lot of his back you know his backroom dealings and mm-hmm. that one of them was with a certain lord of scars mm-hmm. and What's interesting is that we know the reason the Ghostbloods are interested in uh, Roshar to begin with is because they are trying to look at Stormlight as a sort of uh, conduit mm-hmm. is to be able to do the invest to corner it, it, the investiture market. It's one of the most freely available types of investiture. I mean, it just keeps coming around again yeah. and again. I mean, and, again. and it can be easily stored in in gems. Gems, and- yeah. Yeah. And then there's the the side benefit for Kelsier where the heralds are are in a somewhat analogous situation as to him. Mm-hmm. And so he wants any research they have about getting off Roshar cuz he would like to have the ability to freely travel to Cosmere as well as needed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um but something didn't it didn't strike me until I did this project. So we know that they're interested in Roshar because of the investiture market. We don't see any spheres at all in era two of Mistborn. No. And so it implies that that, that ploy of some probably didn't pan out. Well, I mean, we, Brandon has confirmed that only one person has been able to get off of Roshar as a, as a radiant. Yeah. And, and so, you know, so it's like, there's obviously still developments to be made. Um, you know, you, you say like that ploy, um, like yeah. I'm, maybe I'm not understanding Spe- what you're saying. What do you mean? Specifically the Which spheres ploy? themselves. Like we don't okay. see him have, have any spheres full of stormlight, uh, mm. in era two. What we do see them have is purified door. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so my theory just going here, just to start is that they found purified door to be easier than stormlight. Because with Stormlight, the hard part with that, that the hard part we know of is that they need perfect gems for it to yeah. last very for long. For it to last forever. Or yeah. either that or you could put it in a gem and store it in an aluminum box. But yeah, yeah but I mean, but I mean, if Door can just sit in a jar or whatever it was in, mm-hmm. then just hang out, then that would be more stable compared yeah. to Stormlight, which will eventually right leak out now the, and but the counter to that is how difficult apparently it is to traverse the cognitive realm mm. in, near uh near cell cell yeah and so it's really difficult it's just dangerous yeah, yeah. and, and so scary. you would think if you could get a uh, stormlight off of roshar at that point in history easily mm-hmm. they would have that at the at the ready instead of purified door mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they at least at that base, they didn't have it. And so that tells me person like, this is just my theorizing that maybe either the situation in Roshar is so tenuous that trying to get stuff to and from Roshar is impossible or B it just didn't like, they couldn't find a way to make it work or C it didn't apply in this circumstance. Yeah. I mean, pure purified door. The other thing is, I would say Purified Door is more concentrated. Not Purified Door, I don't think is the right term, but just Pure Door um, is uh, it's more concentrated investiture than Stormlight. Would it also be easier to use than Stormlight if you're not a Radiant? But I mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd say any. probably. I, we I know mean, that the thing is, we know Vasher's using it. 
to fuel his Him. need for breaths. Stormlight, yeah. you mean? Yeah. Yeah, but, but he's on Roshar. He's, yeah. he's and he's staying there, yeah. on Roshar. Yeah, and so, but it implies that it at least can fuel magic fairly easily. For Awakeners, it, at least. Yeah. It can, yeah. but it's not necessarily... Like, you have to know how to do it. Yeah. Which we haven't witnessed him doing it, so we don't know. But it's. I think we can infer he, mm-hmm. of all characters, probably Oh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, Hobo Scholar, it's fine. <laughs> well, he is. I mean... <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> I mean, no, like I mean, he he's definitely doing that. That is confirmed that he's. Yeah, using I just I just, to... I mostly meant that we have we didn't have a scene where you watch him breathing it in. Right. So we don't know in what way he's doing it. Well, and he also does ha- still have breath because he uses it to awaken. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, like they're they're not 100 percent interchangeable, but they can be converted. I guess is the yeah is, yeah. Well, I mean, we've already seen the ability to convert investiture across different magic systems, in particular on Skadriel. Um, yeah. And so it's not a huge what jump you, to think that there's what do you, what a do you mean? way. Well, just cause we've seen uh, Alamancy fuel Farukami. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. And so we know that uh, we know that there's ways to convert mm-hmm. it. Now, the actual although to, mechanic, although to be fair, Alamancy is still part of the metallic arts. Yeah. Which is sort of a greater magic They're system. related. Yeah. Yeah, but it's you're pulling energy in some way, shape, or form from the spiritual realm mm-hmm. whenever you're doing uh, these magics in some way, mm-hmm. and so we we know there's ways to convert it. Now, whether it's 100, percent you there's a way to convert from any magic system to another if you have the right tools or knowledge or whatever. That that we don't know, but uh, my gut tells me there's a way you can sort of hack into, you know any system and try and try and get a way to make it happen. I don't know about any system, but I think a lot of ways, yeah. there are some that are much more conducive to it than others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and my, my gut tells me just the way it, uh, the way they work that door breaths and stormlight all are sort of, sort of more purified versions of investiture, just the way that they sort of act. They actively, they, it, they're, it's basically, the, the classical mana. Yeah, it's yeah. different flavors of mana. Yeah, and so now I, I would, I, I do think, uh, Amy, you're right that door probably is a more, I guess, energy base, dense base form, version. You know, just, yeah. yeah, and just. Well, and we know that this is some sort of distilled or. <laughs> door is espresso. Well. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm thinking of a sellish coffee shop. Oh, man. With its open door policy. Anyway, um, but no, that's that's the only thing I really wanted to like. I could think of from the the, the other thing is just the fact that the ghost bloods have been interfering on Roshar for at the minimum decades. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we, we we've known that anyway. Yeah, and so, but I think it's interesting to like now that we know that one hundred percent because we see we- that. Thadakar was dealing with Gavilar specifically. But we've known that the the Ghostbloods were on... I mean, the Ghostbloods were, had been around for a while in Shallan's flashbacks. Yes. Yeah. And so it's more the the dealing with Gavilar that I think is the interesting part. Just that we know that, we know that it's, it was a direct thing. Now, sure. what they were trying to get from him versus what he was trying to get from them... It's clear. It doesn't look like it was that good of a relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't know. It was just, that's interesting. And I think it has of maybe some not implications. Good, of course, it's not a good relationship. You have, uh, you have Kelsier and you have Gavilar, two people who don't trust people. No, <laughs> no. I, I, and I'm, I'm convinced like Gavilar is sort of like the, the off brand version of Kelsier. Like he thinks he has all Kelsier's you oh, know, skills and strengths. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, except Kelsier actually values people and you don't. <laughs> also, he's got Kelsier's, the mileage. also, Kelsier's been around for almost 300 years. Yeah. So he, he knows a thing or two. So, but yeah. Moving over on specifically years. to Kelsier, uh, Mistborn Era 2. Mm. We have more than a couple of things that could have uh, impacts going forward. One, uh, Bands of Mourning exist. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. There's a device somewhere and on. They're that. missing. Yeah. They're, they're we missing. we don't. Yeah. We don't know where they are. 
we, we, you, you, you were saying somewhere on that. We don't know that they're on. No, Skadriel. fair enough. Yeah. There's and honestly, they, they'd probably be even more valuable off Scadrial. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I still think pound for pound, I think the, the Lord Ruler is still the scariest being in the history of of the Cosmere. Un, unbound uh, uh, Ishar would be my, my you're, second. You're, you're talking about non-shardic being. Yeah, non-shardic okay. beings, I should say. I was going to say, and, and not pretty blood, scary. Nightblood no, can't just, move. Yeah. But it's just the fact that compounding speed in particular is just broken. Mm. And there's just a device that lets someone be at least temporarily the Lord Ruler. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just picturing the Lord Ruler, you know, just tensing up and then just saying, I am speed. <laughs> That's, I just mentioned this is like you cannot kill me. I have hope. I am speed. What? <laughs> <laughs> but like that mental, you know, mental speed to go along with your physical speed and you mm-hmm. know strength, and to say nothing of what you know whatever shenanigans you might be able to do with connection and it just seems dangerous that that yeah. that even exists and that mm-hmm. someone presumably Kelsier knows how to make another. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it and probably, with Kelsey, I'm, I'm guessing it took a while to get all of that oomph and all that power into it, though. So at least yeah. there's that investment that's needed still. Yeah, there's still that that problem with it. But I don't know, considering how Kelsey are already has a bit of a, you know, he wants to open source everything because just his nature. He mm-hmm. wants open source power. That could be very dangerous by itself. <laughs> Like, I'm all for open sourcing things. I don't know if we want to open source unlimited cosmic power. <laughs> um, it's a little scary. Yeah. Then we have just the fact we now have pure door powered tech. Mm-hmm. That's just there. It's just a thing that now exists. Uh, on mm-hmm. top of it, we had one of the cooler versions of Awakening we've seen with the Awakened Lock. Yeah. Question. Mm-hmm. So, door. You were talking about door powered tech. Is that the connection juice that the IRE were drinking? I is that think is it, it pure door? Okay, I like, think it might be. Okay. Because it, it's described, it sounds very similar. It was silvery, and mm-hmm. it and, and at the very minimum for them trying what better thing for them to drink? Yeah. To keep right. fueling their themselves. But. We, so we saw awakened locks. We saw pure door powered tech. We saw uh, cellish magic being used off cell, mm-hmm. like let alone in the area it's supposed to be able to be used. Yeah, because we saw cause forgery and we saw a laundry and um, magic. A yeah. Well, and we saw that someone using forgery to give themselves access <laughs> to a laundry and magic. Oh, no, that's off world, no less. And not like the, you know, this is foreshadowing a bit, but not like the enchantress or whatever her name was, the empress. The, the sort, I think the, the sorceress. sorceress. That's what sorceress. I, I went through like every version of that word except the correct <laughs> one. Um, we, like not even like her, where she's inside a building where we think that she's probably hacked it so she can use things. Yeah. You know, in the build she she was just using it out in the open. Now, it's probably because she was powered by pure door at the time, but that's interesting to say the least. Yeah, it's I can't remember who it was, but I think I saw somebody making an argument for that forgery was like if they could have any magic, they'd have that because you could do crazy things with it and I and they pointed out stuff like, you know, you can make yourself an elantra and you can do all mm-hmm. these other things, and I'm like, I never even thought of that until <laughs> Oh, no, that, it, it's, it it's balanced by the fact that to be able to do it, you have to be a shy level forger. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. there's a huge knowledge component tied to mm-hmm. it. Um, I believe her name is currently Shay. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I don't. Good luck finding her. Um, yeah. So who, who knows? Who knows with that? I don't know. I forge, forgery, the ability to use any of the cellish magics that we know about off of cell that has some implications. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I need to reread a laundress cause man, 
It's going to be a yeah. wild card. It's going to pop out. Oh, you know there's a lot of people who, as soon as they finished the last medal, just pulled like, out of the and said, okay, i got to read this again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I want to learn know. about learn more about uh, Chai Shan. Yeah. Is that the, is a, the martial it's art? It's the martial one? art. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's like the Tai Chi style. Mm. It's like the version of Kung Fu that we imagined having as kids. Where you actually like yeah. kick with the force of a thousand punches or something. Yeah, I, I'd love to learn more about Chai Shan. Uh, Chai Shan? Chai Shan? Chai Shan, I think, is what it's called. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure one of our it's listeners been so will write long. it and, and yell at me for getting it wrong. Um, yeah. But uh, that one and Dakor, of course. You know, it, yeah, it's horrifying. Yes. Oof. It's horrifying, well, but it's fascinating. How how about the dang it, I forget what it's called. The 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 blood ceiling? Yeah, blood ceiling. Oh yeah. Where you take that people's seems... bones. <laughs> yeah, they're blood, and then you can just find them anywhere. Well and and on top of and it, they're animate just them. Yeah, they're yeah. necromancers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, they're but branded yeah. spin on necromancers. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost kind of a weird version now I think of it, sort of creating lifeless. I could see yeah. that. And also, it just occurred to me that yeah, so he has well, necromancers on the same place, same place as he has zombies. So, yeah. Yep. Speaking yeah. of lifeless, you know, um, in in Tress, the the animated or the animatronic guardians of the Sorceress's Island. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knows if there's like, you know, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, do you know how many uh, how many breasts she'd need?" And I'm just like, if there are bones inside of these animatronic Probably things. One. You probably need one because I mean that that's how the uh, the stone guardians worked. Mm, uh, Kalich phantoms, and well, and it's clear they have some sort of AI. So you go back to the whole the Raspberry Pi idea, <laughs> where you put some limited programming inside there to give it sort of a mind. Which, mm-hmm. again, what is Elantrian magic? It's basically programming. Yeah. So. So when you start mixing awakening and Elantrian magic and and anything else, there there's some world breaking stuff. Yeah. Well, and then drawing comparisons in uh, Tress, you know, we have those those soldiers she has. Uh, what were the color of those soldiers? Weren't they red? The soldiers that that the sorceress was using the, the animatronic the, things. Yeah, I don't remember them being. You know, I, I think don't they know were what gold, color. weren't they? Gold. So that, but then it was gold. But we have the the re, the soldiers of red and gold that were right. trying to come through the portal, and I'm, I'm wondering if it's sort of a similar thing that the the that it was life a lifeless army that was coming through the portal onto Skadriel. I'm wondering if it's a similar thing with the. What was going on in Tress? Like, not obviously not exactly the same thing, but mm-hmm. same. oh, they just call them. It looks like they they say metal soldiers. Okay, okay. So it doesn't. I think I'm I just, just pictured. At... So, I think I just pictured sort of bronze because when I yeah. think animatronics, I think of like clockwork, and so I think of like TikTok mm. from Return to so, Oz. Yeah, I'm just I'm just pulling this from the copper mine, so it doesn't say it like a direct quote, but it mm-hmm. says metal soldiers. So okay. okay. Well, and then so speaking of things that we learned about in the future, Bobadin has been interfering on other worlds for quite some time. Yeah. And so that that's interesting because we know when we get to Six of the Dusk that it seems like it's mostly a Skadriel versus Roshar thing going on. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Which makes sense because those are the two big powers. What are they interfering on, though? A Bobadin world. Mm-hmm. Oh. A Bobadin yeah. world that Bobadin is less present on. Yeah, hmm. but it, it's it has some interesting implications because if we we see uh, through Kelsier's talk with uh, with Sezed, that Kelsier's looking for allies, and mm-hmm. he suggests uh, he suggests people on cell, which makes sense as we now have a pretty good inkling that that's what Yadith is is a is a shard of auto- of autonomy. And you mean uh, an avatar? Avatar of yeah, sorry, yeah. And 
so and then he suggests a bunch of other places as well. And so you would think like, OK, if Roshar is looking to ally, maybe they would try and ally with Bavadin. But mm-hmm. if they're interfering on one of Bavadin's worlds, maybe less so. It, I'm wondering if in the far future, Bavadin, because of how Bavadin decided to go it alone from the start, mm-hmm. Bavadin is sort of getting isolated and getting sort of picked apart. Like mm. how I kind of picture it, and I don't know if there's enough evidence to back it up, is it almost feels like they're both trying to expand and colonize. Yes. Is is more what it feels like to me. And Bavadin's kind of spread themselves pretty thin, and so they are maybe getting just kind of picked apart, like you're saying, that yeah, well, they don't have so, enough structure otherwise, or strength. So I, I don't know. I've been... I've gone down a rabbit hole of studying history. And one of the things that, uh, at least in the American education system, we sort of, we we talk about colonialization Mm -hmm. and that era of history. We sort of forget some of the reasons for it, especially as we were moving from uh, in the, uh, in the 1800s and the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. Um, War got so dependent on very specific materials resources yep yeah mm-hmm. uh, that in particular uh iron and rubber and mm-hmm. these types of things because suddenly wheels were very important and gasoline that if you didn't have them you would get mowed over and so like that's sort of one of the things that really pushed colonialization into overdrive was all these world powers being like okay i have to go get this resource and it doesn't matter if it's at a you know obscure corner of the world. You have to go get it because if you aren't willing to do it, your enemies will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's sort of like it it takes something that was already happening, which was you know people trying to get resources for themselves, and it pushes it into a state of you suddenly feel like you have it's, to do. It's this. a need rather than yeah, and, and you don't care who race. you're going to be stepping on to to do it because you view it as an existential threat. And even if you're the one winning, you're like, well, well, wh- that spot there, we got to prevent them from getting there. Because we mm-hmm. have to keep our winning streak going or otherwise it could turn on yeah. us. And so it sort of pushes it. And yeah, like I said, uh, it pushes it. And so I have a feeling that in particular, Six of the Dusk, and obviously we're jumping a bit ahead here. Mm-hmm. Um, the AVR must be a game changer in some way. Well, they clearly they can are. Predict your death, yeah. I mean, p- particularly with uh, you know. I mean, sixth, he had he's created a new type of AVR. Yeah, and so in th- th- that in and of itself, by bringing a different kind of bird and breeding it there, suddenly it opens up to all sorts of different abilities. Yeah, well, that that ability in particular that he's found. The precognition? Yeah, the precognition one, that's atium like. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we know we I mean, we see it the, you know, in uh in the lost metal how difficult it is to to get even a little bit of atium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, you're having to combine two different god metals in a process to get even just a sliver of it. Mm-hmm. Any ATM, any precog abilities would be incredible. Big. Mm-hmm. And so I, I was, I was just something interesting thinking about that. Bavadin, sort of in StarCraft terms, like did an early game rush, and we even see that with Bavadin's strategy on Skadrial, trying mm. to take out Harmony's influence before Harmony even has a chance to, to get anything done. But once people start being able to build up Bavadin's strategy, and it's appropriate for someone whose shard is autonomy gets them isolated and kind of alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a feeling things aren't going to be going well for Bovitan going forward. Yeah. I'm not sure. They've antagonized a a few shards or two. I'm I'm not quite as sold as you are on getting picked apart. I think this also, also might be a, we've got to build up in to, to defend against Bovitan against autonomy. And resources are scarce, so we're not fighting. We're not fighting for the resources to fight each other. We're fighting for the resources to defend ourselves. Hmm. At that point, they'll have spaceships, way. though. 
And apparently the reason for needing spaceships seems to be implied that travel through the cognitive realm is going to get very dangerous. Because what, you know, why would you go to the bottom? Space travels hard. If there's anything NASA has shown is <laughs> space is not a fun thing to go through, even with, mm -hmm. you know, Cosmere hacks. It's not very think, friendly to you people. would think if you could walk, walk or drive well, there, you would rather do that. Well, it's also a weird situation because the more of the Cosmere they explore, the bigger the cognitive realm gets and the less convenient it is to travel across. Mm, that's true. Because their, their concept of space gets bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but even Brandon's talked about I that. I mean, co comparatively, it, it's still easier than, you know, interstellar travel. Yeah. But it, it's just sort of an interesting concept of. Well, because I think I think it was Kelsier who was talking about how I don't like the idea of sending my people out there under, the, you know, under lands into control of other Mm -hmm. other shards like that right. seems dangerous yeah and so well, and, and every version of the cognitive realm that we've seen has been dangerous i mean the yeah. the most blatant is clearly on cell with just the roiling storm of the door that's there yeah. but you know in scadriel it, it it's a there's also I mean, well and spren yeah you know yeah. and and uh like the the Roshar. more the 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 lower spren some of them are more feral. They're terrifying. Yeah. Like I think it was Anger Spren. Spren. And, uh, the oh, Anger, Anger Spren. Spren? Yeah. yeah. Like they'll eat you. That, uh -huh. They look scary. But then, um, you know, on, uh, on Scadriel, it's the, the squishy mist and, yeah. um, you know, on, uh, and, well, and also, and just even traversing it, because if you get to a new land, the land is where you can't go. Which sort of changes how you have to traverse yeah, water the place. And water mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't know. It's just one of these things that that implication by itself is pretty. Like that. That's I think probably in the end the juiciest of all of them. Mm -hmm. Just what's going on with Bavadin now that we know Bavadin is openly interfering with other worlds. Well, and the other thing is. Uh... You mentioned, uh, or I'm looking farther down in your uh, in your notes. For them to be able to colonize, they have to have follow specific rules. So there's clearly yeah. treaties in place. Um, it actually kind of reminds me of oh, what what was it? Well, we, like Star Trek uh, yeah. with First Contact. You know, oh, as soon yeah. as uh, as soon as Zephram Cochran hits warp speed suddenly that's when they make first contact because suddenly it's just like, okay, things just got a whole lot more dangerous. Yeah. Because you have crossed this minimum Special, level of, yeah. of technology. Uh, I, did, I can't remember if it was, was it in the hitchhiker books or there's another book where it's like, as soon as they, they discovered something, all eyes turned on them and it's like, Ooh, they are now ripe for plucking. They're, you know, they're, They've know. crossed the threshold, mentioned. and so now they're available. I can't remember which books it was, but it was basically as soon as humanity hit a certain point, there was there. another. There was a race that was like, okay, they're at this point. Now we can go in and invade them. We're allowed yeah. to because it fits. It fulfills the treaty. Mm. Yeah, which it will. That's that's how it is uh, with any sort of colonization efforts. Um, it reminds me in a little bit it, in. 40k warhammer 40 uh 40k yeah. there's a whole thing with um like the base the this great rift there's a you know great cataclysm or whatever and the planets that were more isolated are actually the ones that fare better because they weren't dependent upon connections with the other planets for resources mm. and so by being more isolated, even though that's in a whole situation where things are, you know, normally an interconnected society allows you so much more benefits because you have access to different resources you wouldn't have otherwise mm -hmm. until that system breaks down and you suddenly all these resources you were relying on aren't available and you don't have enough to subsist on what you have locally. Mm hmm. And so, and that's something we see with sixth understanding in his story 
where he's like, you know, no, we should stop relying on their tools. We need to be providing for ourselves. Because then we don't become dependent on them. Yep. Yeah. Because once you're dependent upon them for resources, mm -hmm. they have a lever of control against you. Mm -hmm. Um, then, uh, let's see. Are we sort of done with that? Way it kind of, it kind of reminds me of how with COVID, like when everything broke down with getting stuff everywhere, like, well, shipping, yeah, well, cause yeah. The, yeah. the supply lines specifically to China were big ones because mm -hmm. we yeah. have so much manufacturing over there right. that when they shut down for, cause that's where COVID started, there was suddenly, uh, there were suddenly issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, you're seeing everyone around the world start to realize, oh, there's, some value to being able to fend for yourself mm -hmm. yeah um and it gets yeah. it gets interesting for these these outlying worlds where they they're gonna see all this great tech that you know the people from the stars have and it's like no you might be better off if you can fend this off as long as you can yeah mm -hmm. maybe maybe get one and study it and figure out how to do it yourself compared to just buying a bunch from them yeah right that and that's part of, yeah, Six of the Dusk. Um, uh, Duke Man and Chad mentioned Six of the Dusk as sort of, that is one of the things I was thinking of because, you know, they have these devices and if as soon as they start understanding the devices, then they're able to come in and colonize. You know, the, the ones from above are giving them things and oops, accidentally leaving it open so that you can study it. Mm -hmm. um, hint, and, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And sort of oh, luring yeah. them into crossing that threshold so that they're able to do, yeah. Yeah. They're trying to get their hands caught in the cookie jar. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, it's it, it's basically it's it's a it's a honey stick. Yep. Well, so also in Mistborn Era Two, we also have the fact that we see Hoyt is helping out Harmony in some way, shape, or form. Um, if we go to Rhythm of War, the letter that uh, Hoyt sends, and we're going to discuss more about that at a later point. Um, Harmony was looking to form a sword. Uh, that's the entire story of Mistborn Era 2 is the forming mm -hmm. of that sword. But think about how much Hoyd is central to that from, uh, from the third book on, because Hoyd is the one who tossed the coin that started the entire adventure to, to a wax. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that happens unless Harmony's the one specifically requesting him to help in that regard yeah and we've yeah and and we even see a correspondence i mean he specifically says come to my planet and talk to me yep. you know, and so <laughs> yeah they're definitely in in a conversation and based on the the letters it sounds like they're both willing to ally. I mean, Hoyd specifically reaches out looking for allies and Harmony appears to be amenable to the idea. Mm -hmm. He just well, wants to be a little bit more out in the open. And by the time we get to Tress in the Emerald Sea, Hoyd refers to him as Sazed. Yes, he does. And so there's at least some level of familiarity mm -hmm. between the two yeah. of them at this point. Well, and Hoyd knew him, knew of him as Sazed in... Uh, yeah. Era Earlier, one. Yeah. I mean, he he went up to Terrace. We we still don't know what he was doing up there. Yeah, I th I thought that was one of those times when he just kind of was like, "I'm supposed to go up here. I don't know why I'm going." He he wasn't now. he wasn't sure, but but we still don't know exactly. Yeah. but he and was supposed to be there. We didn't get to see him up there yeah. either. Yeah, all we saw of him was leading a bunch of refugees down from Terrace. Yeah. So who who knows there, but. There's, it's the first time we see Hoyd openly working with one of the shards, probably because, and this is probably the truth of it, probably because it's the only shard that didn't know who he was before, him. and oh. everyone, every all the other shards are just like, go away. I mean, li literally, <laughs> some of the some of the letters we got were literally that, just go you away, Hoyd. Allowed. You're not allowed here. Shoot. Specifically, Bavadin. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bovedin and uh Endowment and was less Edgley. so. Yeah. yeah. Edgley was less so. She, she was still, you know, my dearest Sophandrius. It's like she was still stay, stay away. But yeah. She but, 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 but she was still she was she was friendly. You're just like, don't get involved, you know, don't 
don't mess around. But she's still very friendly to, towards yeah. her. Well, we get the impression from Hoyd that uh, Cultivation would not be pleased to see him. Yeah. We we know Odium would not be, uh, in either mm-hmm. form now, wanted to see yeah. him. <laughs> and so, yeah, there's some fun stuff. I don't know. I, I feel like... Uh... I, I feel like Teravodium would be uh, interested to... He, he he wants to study Hoyt a bit more. He would, but I think he also can read the tea leaves and see that letting him, you know, move about is a yes, problem. Clearly. I mean, he removed yeah. his memory. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I think he, he also own. wants to keep Hoyt in the dark about who exactly he is, too. He'd rather yeah. let mm-hmm. him think that he's still... It's not race, is it? Yeah. Yeah, race. Yeah, race. Is, okay. is race is what he's making him think. Yeah, making him think that he's still race. I mean, it's cause that's that's a great little, you know, feather in your cap to have just mm-hmm. everyone thinking you're some ancient being when you're actually far less practiced, but maybe a little more practical with the powers. Yeah. Um, yes, the diagram did have a reference yeah. Liberally to him, and the chat. traveler. Yeah, Liberlita in chat mm-hmm. asked if the diagram has may have mentioned Hoyd. Um, so yeah, I think the, the, it was either the Traveler, the Wanderer, or something like that. The Traveler is the name of the short story. Yeah, it's probably about Hoyd. I just, I just want uh-huh. okay, Wander is what it was in the diagram then. Mm-hmm. Okay, but uh, um, which I actually but, think that's the title that uh, Sezed uses in his letter as well. Wanderer, wanderer. dear dear Wanderer, yes. Okay. Um. Everyone's using some some form of like vagrant as the the name, and depending upon your relationship with him, it, it changes what they call you. The the other thing though that is interesting, we're you know we were talking about uh, Teravodium and Hoyt. He's the only person that we've seen actually get the better of Hoyt. Yeah, mm, the sorceress did, but it was short lived. The sorceress did, but he. It, it was part of his deal. It was it was dual edged though. Like, like he, he, he 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 stepped into it. She yeah. she yeah. set a trap. He saw it and stepped into it. Yeah. Well, he like he openly agrees that it was more difficult than he thought it would be. Right. Yeah. And so, but he still she, got she, out of it. So I wouldn't yeah. say that she actually got the better of him because he kind of like it was. He stepped in a little bit deeper than he thought he was stepping into it, but he, but he also still, he still got out. Yeah. But the uh, let's see, then the other sorry, moving on from Hoyd, the other big thing from Miss Born Era 2 going forward, harmony or discord? Oh, yes. Uh, and I, I, I have a feeling that's going to end up being the correct answer mm-hmm. is yeah, it's worried. both, which is why we actually see two of him. The shadow thing going on. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Well, it's because one because. So something that Sezed talks about when he takes up the powers at the end of Hero of Ages is he understands preservation is not this perfect thing Mm -hmm. because it's too rigid. Yep. And then as he takes up the powers uh, with uh, with Ruin, he understands, yes, it is death and destruction, but it is also peace with these things. Well, it's also growth and life. Yes, it's because without because things it, yeah, it's, grow it's just, from it's it's, it's changing its purest uh, mm-hmm. like negative form. It's just that yes. things decay with time. Nothing is it's forever. Entropy. Yeah, yeah. And but I, I love that it's also that it is the conceptual you know understanding that this is an okay thing that it happens, and that he he had to go through some pain to start understanding that as well. Th- yeah. There's a uh, there's a board game. Um, yes, I'm going into board games. Uh, it's called Small World, and in the in the game, each player takes on a different race of of creatures, and they they expand them as much as they can, and then at any point they can choose to let that race go into decline. At which point they shift over and they pick up a new race of creatures, and that's mm. that's sort of the the point of the game is, you know, you, you try and spread out and then let them decline and move another race into that area and it's just this this sort of circle of life type game. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
and so th- that's I, just sort of the feeling that I got from. Really. Yeah, and so what I think yeah. this, I think the harmony versus discord thing, is I think it's the problem of Hoyd was trying too much to be the balance of these things. Mm-hmm. It was forgetting the fact that there is that every single one of these shards there is a, a plus and a minus to it, mm-hmm. and so harmony makes it so that he can bring things in balance, but it's also, he has a hard time acting because okay. he's, he's too busy trying to be peaceful. Right. Discord, on the other hand, is going to be sort of his left hand. And ignore the fact I held up the wrong hand for each one of these things where it's the, it has the ability to change things, but by its nature, it unbalances things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's going on here is Hoyd hasn't personally internalized both the positives and negatives of his powers. You mean Say Zed? Or Say Zed, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Hoyd. It seems like Say Zed is trying to hold them in balance rather than allow them to orbit each other in equilibrium. Mm. Yeah. Because that's more uh, that'd be really chaotic to have it go from discard to harmony and discord to harmony yeah. again. Like he's trying to hold them and not let one tip the balance while it almost would work better for it, them to you, be sort of I, I, spinning. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it as an orbit, but that makes a lot of sense, especially on a word, world with no moon, because <laughs> the, the one thing about having a moon is there is there is constant change. There's high there's tide and pulls. low tide. There's tidal yeah. pull. And even, even though we would consider, like peep, anyone who doesn't understand the nature of it would look at that and say how chaotic that you know all these things are going on, but if you understand the ba- the dance that those things do a system it's not, in equilibrium yeah yeah it's 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 in it's an equilibrium not in at all times but it there's a there's a pattern to it and well, if hoyd or i keep saying hoyd if sezed could understand like or or figure out a way to sort of he's going to be going through these cycles sort of a breathe in mm-hmm. and a breathe out People well, could start to plan for that. It's like if you if you think of the the symbol of the yin yang, um, mm-hmm. there there's an implied motion in the shape of that. You know, you have the two teardrop shapes that are interlocked, but it 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 has this, this sort of implied motion of the big end. You know, sort of cycling around each other rather than just a uh, a half moon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, well, it, and- r- rather than a, a, a circle that's just drawn right down the middle, you have light on one side and dark on the other side. You have this curving figure that looks like it spirals together. Well, and, and to add to your point on that, the the two colors associated with you know ruin and preservation are black and white, just like the yin yang. Hmm. So I think there's there I think there's something there to that point that he was always destined to become both. Mm -hmm. Now, rather than being harmony, he is ruin and preservation. Yeah. Similar maybe to Bavadin in that, like they're sort of avatars of each other. I want, Mm. like, I wonder if it literally will be a split at some point. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's in the future. Yeah, we don't, we don't know yet. Yeah, but no, I hadn't thought about it in terms of an orbit. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. All right. Um, well, and, you know, Brandon has played with, uh, like, for example, with uh, Taldane. It's tidally locked. Brandon does yeah. kind of like that objects pulling. And then if you look at uh, um, Lumar, you have it's the 12, 12 moons that are, yeah. again, locked yeah this is rather than being locked it's constant equalizing motion Mm -hmm. uh there was one more thing i forgot to put in the show notes i just added um that i think we all sort of gloss over when we read because it's 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 part of a climax but it's not the climax of the story where um they get all the uh all the all the warriors of red and gold are coming through. They're going to be coming through a singularity that Bavadin was able to create. You mean you mean perpendicularity? Perpend- sorry, yeah, not singularity. Yeah, a perpendicularity. I Bavadin to, I was make that able mistake all the time. Able to create through 
it's I, I, memory might be wrong, but it seemed like they were just pouring like a crap load of door in one spot to sort mm-hmm. of just punch a hole. An artificial shard pool. Yeah. So yeah. I also I I randomly was looking up et metal and harmonium anyway, and I think it also was stated that if you have too much of it in one place, it can make it a can be dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that was another thing they may have used to do it too. Yeah, they could have. Yeah, it, it sounded like it was in liquid form, so that makes mm-hmm. me think door the way they were doing it, but. I'd, I'd have to go back more. and read it to be sure. But just the fact that, uh, I mean, it's using a God substance of some kind either mm. way. Yeah. The fact that you can punch holes into the cognitive realm if you get enough enough juice flowing. Yeah. That in and of itself could have some really big implications that, yeah. that you can you can portal in. some Like you, suddenly you're in their base bombing their dudes if you got enough stuff on one side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the other thing is with perpendicularities, there's so much stuff that we don't know. I mean, honors perpendicularity is the, in the shard is, is in the, the high storm. Yeah. That in and of itself, it's a mobile perpendicularity. It's weird. Yeah. You know? And so now we have, so there's all sorts of madness that can happen with these things that we're, we, we, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. I don't think. Yeah. And so that was just one I, I forgot to put in the show notes. I'm like, oh, yeah, that could have a. Oh, yeah, a thing. <laughs> that could be a thing. Um, we already discussed in Six of the Dusk uh, the sky people needing to cross certain thresholds to colonize. Mm-hmm. You, you also uh, you were talking about the artificial shard pool. Mm-hmm. We also see a defunct shard pool on on First of the Sun, you know, where yeah. where, where the the aviar Oh, or from the, the, where the worms, because the, the worms kind of absorb this investiture that's in this no longer a uh, perpendicularity or no longer a full shard pool, but it's still there and it's something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's definitely you have in order to. Oh, I forget the term they use, but in order to cross over you can't accidentally fall into the cognitive realm through a shard pool. You have to sort of understand what you're doing. You have to have some level Mm. of knowledge. Um, Although we don't really know how that worked for, for Ryano, for example. No, we don't, you know, cause we don't really know, like he told them to take him and put him into the pool, but I think he was expecting death. Yeah. Yeah. And it could have been maybe because he was wanting to cross over in a different sense. Maybe that was sort that's, of the key. That's possible. Or, or I mean, he was different. he was enough out of his mind and everything else that he may have thought that he was trying to go to the afterlife, yeah. and then he ended up. Well, the the other place. thing that we do got to remember is the fact that there's not an an understood intent behind those shard pools on cell because of the nature mm-hmm. of their gods being dead. Yeah. So we don't know what that effect would have. Well, I mean, I don't think, yeah, that, that's the other thing is I, I, I'm, yeah, it's just how, how did those, how did that shard pool come to be? Like, I think that's the shard pool. It, it was created when they were still alive. Yeah. And now that they're dead, it seems to be still a fully functioning shard pool. Yeah. It still it definitely works. Mm hmm. It's just the question of does it work the same way as when it was alive? (laughs) Mm -hmm. But I don't know about that. Well, I'm trying to think. I think the only uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The only time we've actually seen someone cross over through a shard pool is Ryano when they pushed him through, Mm -hmm. and Hoyd in Secret History, and uh, and Hoyd in uh, um in not in a story in stormlight because uh rock was telling a story about the white the white haired god who who, who came up out of the water yeah so we don't see it but there's at least legends of it with his people Mm -hmm. yeah and so white haired trickster god and that describes him perfectly it works well uh, it it does Loki every single and... time people talk about casting people, and I always I can't help but just think of Tom Hiddleston playing Hoyd. Tom Tom Hiddleston or uh, or David Tennant, yeah. either one would be perfect for Hoyd. 
no, it just, mm. I don't know. But yeah, I think those are the only times, but I think the only times we've seen it happen were right. I know and Hoyt in secret history and which the, the one in secret history is the most interesting because Kelsier or not, uh, yeah, Kelsier sees him from the cognitive realm go into the shard pool and then cross over into the physical realm. And so it's sort of backwards from the way we would normally see it. Yeah. But because right. of Kelsier's nature, he can see both sort of both sides of it. Mm-hmm. Whereas well, normally you can't. I think the reason he can see both sides is because he's literally in the well of Ascension. Well, no, cause he could see, uh, he could see the outlines of people before he got to the well. Cause he like saw the outlines of people as. Oh yeah. But, but I think that's sort of the the nature of Shadesmar in uh, on on Scadrail. Yeah. yeah, well, because they all they all manifest as as mist in mm-hmm. uh, Scadrail, whereas on Roshar, everyone manifests as uh, beads, A right? Little bead. Like even in people. Because that's one of the that's one of the cooler moments when they cross over with Shalon, and she's like picking up beads, just trying to find something useful. Mm-hmm. And I think it's I think it's Drahe's bead that she like finds herself picking up and she has this weird surreal moment of suddenly getting a flash of like the entirety of who dre he is mm. i don't i don't recall that i don't remember it was either, either scar or dre he i can't remember which one it was but i, d- I don't recall yeah but I, I what i remember specifically is she she can feel their panic because suddenly you know Kaladin, you know, the the entire command structure is gone. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and suddenly like, she has this moment of them realizing I'm in charge. I like, but I'm supposed to be the rebel. How is the rebel supposed to be in charge? You know, mm-hmm. and I, I just remember that moment in particular. It stood out to me writing wise. I, I really liked the hmm. the image of what was going on there. Yeah, I don't recall that. Yeah, it's it's good. I mean. Get in line as far as great moments and you know <laughs> words of radiance, but uh, it's, it's a big book. There's lots of good moments, and it. it's hard to remember them all. Words of radiance. Or, what do you mean? You mean rhythm of war, or or, or oath oath no. no, words of wasn't it words of. They radiance? don't go into the cognitive realm in words of radiance. No, you're right. Sorry, yeah, oathbringer. Sorry, oh, still get in line in that one too. Okay. Um, they're all starting to run together, <laughs> probably which is even bad because they're really big. <laughs> Arguably even more so an Oathbringer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I have learned uh, through reading forums that there are some people who do not care for Oathbringer. <laughs> I mean, there's people who don't care for every single book, and there's people yeah. who adore I, every single book. That's one shocked, of the great things about it. I was shocked at the number of them, at least. Hmm. And I, I found out, and may, maybe Amy can <laughs> correct huh. me if I'm wrong here, because uh, the... The ones I found who don't like Oathbringer, they have both been female and their big complaint. And I want to know if Amy has the same thing here. Let's see, there's two. There's supposed to be two weddings in that book and we don't really get either. <laughs> um, I think I a, remember having like a moment of like, but but I want to see Adolin and Shalom get married. Um, we get one but, of them. So, but so they but, hate but it, that wedding though. Oh. It's like, oh, just a big gust of wind comes in. It's like, oh, you're married now. Yeah, I, that was that wasn't the most satisfying wedding, but it also doesn't feel like they, Stormlight they, Archive is the book I'm I'm looking for for the big wedding no. romantic scenes. I'm looking for action and all of these other things yeah. more they, than they didn't get William and that. Kate is what they didn't get. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, but it made me realize because you know, I'm coming at this from a very different perspective than a lot of people because I don't tend to read fantasy. It made me realize there's a whole nother genre of people coming into you know Brandon's books who maybe mm-hmm. do expect more of a romance. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and they're these scenes didn't didn't make them happy, and I'm like, oh, I mean, I don't like that's not what I'm looking for, but it made me realize, oh. I guess they're kind of right on that part. There really wasn't a very good wedding, was there? Yeah, I mean, it was. It was kind of like, oh, oh, okay. I guess, I guess that's the wedding. Okay. I mean, I can see Navani wanting something more than that, but she'll she'll take it. It's not about like it's not like you're gonna sit there and go, excuse me, Stormfather, that is not an acceptable, you know, especially not someone there. who's as pious as, as she. Oh, is. yeah. So mm-hmm. I mean, 
Well, and also it's her. It's it's both their second weddings. They're 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 just like, eh, we're kind of done with this. Well, and it, she got her man finally, so that's <laughs> what this, she's got to focus on, right? I think what you meant to say, she got her chill cakes. Chill I'm, cakes. I'm just saying it's. Uh, they basically had their world's view of a civil ceremony, but ironically, they were married by what the closest thing that they have to a deity. <laughs> I mean. Yep. Because their religious figures were refusing to, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Siblings. No, that's that's right. Yeah, I hadn't thought yeah. of it in those terms, but yeah, mm -hmm. breaking all those expectations. All right. Well, I didn't expect to get in that discussion. Sorry, I derailed the. <laughs> um, nah, it's but, fine. It's fine. Uh, I guess, unless you guys have anything else for the, the two six of the dusk books, because I think we've already covered. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've 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 yeah. covered those pretty well. All right, so all that we have and left is... we can come is, back to stuff later in another All that we episode. have is uh, Tress in the Emerald Sea as far as the books in the future. <laughs> Which is its own episode, I think. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, we covered a lot of two it. two of those. <laughs> but there's a, there's a few that are I think are interesting. One, um, the tech that we see in, in Tress. Yeah. Yeah, laptops and nuclear warheads and... <laughs> or and at least oh, rockets, boy. not warheads. Sp yeah, but. spaceships. And tablets and all that. Yeah. Mechamen. Okay, so yeah. let's let's start with the tablet cuz the tablet's one of the cooler ones because mm -hmm. it's using some sort of connection trick to understand intent so that it can translate for someone who literally can't even speak. That's pretty awesome. Like as far well, as Well, is tech he goes. he's typing though, isn't he? He's typing. Yeah, yeah, but it it puts it in words so it understands the intent like of people talking and puts it into oh. words for yeah it's got it's got like predictive text and it, it, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's better than just a uh, what than we've just got. a type a typewriter yeah, yeah. it's better than um. siri that's for sure <laughs> i mean the, the ability to understand intent is a big deal yeah as far as tech goes predictive like, text is is still a problem in and and we tech. this is one of the first times we get to see in like People have been theorizing for a while that these magic systems can, in, you know, could interface with technology. Um, you know, just look at something like right now that's popping off chat GPT and oh how gosh. it's trying to mimic, you know, human speech. But it has to sort of infer intent from what people are saying. It gets things wrong all the time. If you mm -hmm. do any of these text to image programs, there's always stray limbs and fingers all over the place. Yeah. Um, but technology that you could use some sort of magic hack to give it so that it understands what you mean. Mm -hmm. mm. Awaken circuits. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, look at Nightblood. That was the whole problem was they gave it a command to destroy evil. Cause I was like, okay, we got to make it super simple. And it's like, okay, well, but it has no way to conceptualize what evil is. Mm -hmm. Try that again with that much breath, but this oh, time gosh. you give it some idea of what evil is. Oh gosh, Ooh. no, because 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 then you end up with uh, Vicky from the iRobot movie. Yes. Oh no, evil AIs that are just trying to help. Oh man, the the worst yeah. the the worst type of villain, one that mm. wants to help. Mm -hmm. Minority report. Minority yeah. report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this chat. Um, oh, so, man. like, we, we there are, there, there's some intense implications for this. Yeah. Well, we also haven't yeah. talked about the highest level of technology that we see in Tress. Socks and sandals and Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. So. <laughs> and plaid, was it plaid shorts, too? Was that the other thing, too? I thought it was, it was plaid or... Sure. I just picture him looking like, uh, like, based on the art I saw and just my own image, I kind of melded him with Merlin from The Sword in the Stone. Oh, at yeah, the very, very end yeah. where he comes in wearing the, the Hawaiian shorts, shirt from the, the Hawaiian from the shirt. shorts and everything. Yep. It's yeah. just a beardless, ver beardless Merlin is hoist. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and so <sighs> um, there's some to say nothing of the fact that there's ways to like as far as predictive goes. I mean, we have magic systems that let you somehow see into the future. Can you get truly predictive technology in some way using mm -hmm. hacks like this? Could you feed it a copper mind in some way and have it like have access to an actual person's memories for Cortana like AIs? 
Well, and then there's the problem of like you have to make sure you get someone who's not biased. But but I mean everybody's biased. Everyone's biased. It's, yeah. So it's can like so have, how to... if somebody's about to die, can they store their entire memory into a copper mind and then you use that to upload their brain into an AI? Oh man. Ooh. Well, and then like because that's that, I mean that's the real hubris of the whole thing of trying to make Nightblood is they tried to say it destroy evil when as you you know as just regular beings they don't have a full concept of what evil is because mm-hmm. how how can any one person possibly hold that entire concept in their mind with all the the vaguenesses the exceptions the the, the odd situations. situations yeah and you think that they're gonna like people are gonna stop at oh you know nightblood was a bad idea we sh- uh, no you- we've gone te- far enough we should stop yeah <laughs> i mean anyone who knows any technical person they're always like i think i could do it a little bit better don't you think yeah well and then you end up with uh with Vivina's sword yep which we don't yeah. know anything about yet i want to know no i have a feeling we'll see it in the next book i hope mm-hmm. so um I see in your your notes here you have Kelsey are still alive question mark because Coy does refer to an old adversary in the present tense. Yeah, what he always a, says as an old adversary of my an old adversary of mine likes to say or something like that. Always it's says like, or likes to say or, yeah. Says how far how tense. far in the future Kelsey is still around? Oh yeah. Is he sane or has he gone full Harold at this point? Well, and we also notice he still refers to him as an adversary. Yep. Yeah, I don't see them getting along too well. I, they, they're no. too they they have they're far too similar to ever get along. Yeah. Is it uh is it enemy mine? You know, is it like the I my, want it uh, to be. I what I re- what I would love is them for have to have a Sherlock and uh Sherlock Moriarty. Holmes and Moriarty, Moriarty relationship, but we don't know oh, which man. one is the Sherlock and who's the Moriarty. <laughs> both are Sherlock and both are Moriarty. Yes. I Just want don't. it. I want it so well, much. And then I, and then an epic uh, back-to-back fighting moment where there's like, okay, fine, we're friends. Like, no. just that one, that final moment. I, I want that final moment where they're just like, where they like, you know, shake hands, you have the powerful music, and you just like, and then the rock music starts playing, and it's just like, it's time to, to fight. And I, I want it. I want it. And then Kelsey uh, bonds uh, Hoyd. And becomes his shard blade, and <laughs> and the theme song from. I want to uh, turn this into the Soul Eater anime, okay? No, and oh, and the rock theme song from from Final Fantasy fourteen Shadowbringer starts playing. One brings shadow, one brings the light, and it's just. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So okay, the other topic that I've wanted to discuss for the past couple episodes, but we keep forgetting to. Uh, Condra. <laughs> Are, are free and apparently they're kind of weird now <laughs> well because they haven't had to try and imitate people harmony yeah, has like... given Condra a sock Condra are free yeah <laughs> and so that in and of itself uh, that that comment by hoyd that ever since he sort of freed them and they stopped having to imitate humans they've gone kind of i think he said kind of weird is what he's i think the actual quote um but it's kind of this idea of they didn't even know what their culture really was because so much of it was tied to imitating humans and serving. And now that they're given this freedom, Conjure are now sort of figuring out, okay, what are we? And what they are apparently is really uncomfortable in conversations because they don't understand how biology uh works and how it makes people uncomfortable that we can't just keep growing stuff it just doesn't do that and he just wants to bargain for people's corpses (laughs) which is perfectly normal right well look being a grave robber is rude so why not be a a grave uh investor (laughs) or you know just you know like a like a prenup but you know like pre-death agreement thing yeah, you know, with with certain uh, you know, post mortality agreements. Yes, it's uh, it's like your will. It's it's a proactive Frankenstein. There you go. Except they're kind of the Frankenstein. 
<laughs> it's proactive inverse Frankenstein. Well, yeah. I mean, they they are Doctor Doctor Frankenstein themselves, but they're also the monster, so, or the creature. How does he come up with these things? Uh, he and Dan talk, and yeah, they're weird together. Fair point. Fun. Fair point. They are good influences on each other. <laughs> they are influences on each other. Yeah, we, we, we will say nothing beyond that. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, we should probably start wrapping up. Yeah. Yeah, because the only we're, thing we're I had a, was a laundry and magics outside of a launcher, but we kind of covered that already. So, yeah. But yeah, well, and, and we've is... been wondering about a laundry and magic outside of a launcher since Secret History. So, yeah. So it's been a while. It's been a minute. Yeah. It's the, the whole point is uh, just if I can sort of break it all down to one thing, is I'm impressed that Brandon is willing to jump ahead of so many storylines to tell other stories Mm -hmm. uh less experienced writers would not have the the either the guts or the wisdom to do or not do this Mm -hmm. i think without a big without ruining stuff i think a big chunk of it is that brandon has outlined a bunch of things and probably has oodles of notes somewhere so that he can make sure that he stays on track with the the main points that he needs to hit he had what he has also is is karen alstrom you know his continuity editor you know she she has everything you know and so like he he can go to her and he's and say okay i want to do this is this possible can where where will this work yeah you know and they can work on that yeah but yeah he Um, uh in chat they mentioned he's by doing this he is locking himself into certain things yeah which means you you've got to be a good writer to to still be able to do all the cool stuff Mm-hmm. it's something that a, a pants writer shouldn't try yeah mm-hmm. and because and brandon many is yeah but because brandon is such a good outliner he can it, he it's can one of these things that. that shows the strength of being a good outliner mm-hmm. uh you know there's, there's obviously trade-offs that go along with any strategy but this is the strength yeah. a good outliner really has is they have flexibility to go places with their story a pants mm-hmm. writer probably shouldn't. Yeah, you ha- you don't see a whole lot of authors who are willing to tell a story out of order. Um, mm-hmm. There are a few who've done it well. And when I say out of order, I'm not talking about, for example, Star Wars, where you have a full trilogy and then you do the prequels. And the, um, yeah. I'm talking more along the lines of like, uh, if you're familiar with Stephen Bruce, he did the Jaharig books, that the um, uh, Dragarian series. Anyway, uh-huh. um each book takes place at a, at a different time in this main character's life. So they're not told in order. Mm. Um, but, you know, and so you don't see it that often just because a story has a beginning, middle and end. And most people want to hear the story from the beginning to end. Yeah. Um, it's a little you, easier to wrap your head around. Yeah. You'll, you'll have yeah. exceptions like in the Chronicles of Narnia, the, um, the magician's nephew, which was the sixth book he wrote, jumps back and becomes a prequel to everything. Um, but Again, it's just not common. It's a risky thing. Yeah. I mean, I could see if, if you really wanted to get a scene out or something like that, just don't publish it until mm. you get answers because then you can make sure it fits the continuity yeah. if you really want to work on it. Mm-hmm. But but the but thing yeah. is, when Brandon just does a scene, he ends up writing Mistborn Era 4 <laughs> or Era 2. And it's, yeah. and it's great and we love it. We do. And to the point that now, like, if we, if Brandon starts letting more people playing the Cosmere sandbox and tell their own stories. I I think I'm now most like I'd be most be in favor of, and I never would have thought this when he announced the different secret projects, Tress and the Emerald Sea. I, I want to see more on that. World, I, would, yeah. I would just love to see someone just like, let's just tell a swashbuckling adventure. Yep. Yeah. And just do it on, on an ocean that we didn't see anything of. Yeah. And just go from there. And so, uh, which is, which would be even more bonkers. Cause then we'd be giving, someone else the keys to the future but yeah. the way brandon set it up he can do that if he wants well and the thing is he can you know have people uh giving people the keys to the future sure or he could it can just be a much smaller scale story yeah just yeah. off in some corner of the planet that doesn't affect the rest of the cosmere it's just this happens to these people and it's not earth shattering sometimes those low stakes stories 
are really good because then you get into the the personal aspect mm-hmm. of it. It's a lot more um what's the word I'm thinking of? Intimate. Uh, intimate. That's exactly the yeah. word I was looking for. And I mean as as far as Tress is concerned, like for Tress, it is a very small contained yeah. story. All mm-hmm. the other Easter eggs don't really matter to her. She's I mean, not aware be, of them. She doesn't know. Let's be real. If Tress hadn't had to deal with Hoyd and, and the sorceress, this would be exactly what we just were talking about. Mm-hmm. A small yeah. contained story. Well, and I think it, when Brandon wrote this story for his wife, it may very well have been that. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is that um, like, if you do a, a sequel to Tress of the Emerald Sea, Tress's story is essentially done. You could like she's good, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a sequel to *Tress of the Emerald Sea* wouldn't be a sequel. uh, At at least I don't necessarily think it would be. It wouldn't be *Tress and Charlie's* sequel. It would be Lumar's sequel, or their kid, or or their kid, or or somebody's side story, or like is it Soleil who's the the helmswoman? Yes. And honestly, that would be a great connection because you could take her and she sails off into the sunset, ends up in one of the other nine seas we haven't seen. Yeah, so I mean, you, you there there are ways you can do it and connect it, but not have it mess up Tress's story. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, so it's just I I'm shocked that Brandon has built something so robust that it can withstand that. Yeah, this was like th- I, I I've said before, and a lot of people will disagree with me. The prose and storytelling in Tress of the Emerald Sea is not my favorite, um, just because I feel like. It, it it's I felt like the storytelling wasn't as as tight, but the world building, the characters, and the plot itself, I loved. Like it, it, in my opinion, the world building is some of the best that that Brandon has ever done. It was super fun. Like the only one that even holds a candle to it, in my opinion, is Roshar. And that takes a lot of not not quite info dumping, but there's I remember seeing videos of people complaining about being like how many prologues are there mm-hmm. <laughs> to get into Stormlight Archive? It's like, so there's right. the prologue with the prologue with the prologue. There's the prelude, the prologue, and then chapter one. Anyway, so like, I've, I've seen lots of people who have struggled with getting into it. and There's a reason Brandon tells people, yeah. you got to trust me before you start Stormlight Yeah, Archive. you got to trust me, or you've got to already be ready for this kind of thing. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. But yeah, so, the future... It's out yes. there. <laughs> yep. So, but yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, take it away. All right. Well, um, to our listeners, we love hearing from you. So please send in questions, emails, write us. Uh, you can ask us about the Cosmere. You could drop us ideas for topics that you would love for us to discuss. We want to hear what you want to hear about. Um, so please let us know. Uh, while you're at it, we would love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing. We want feedback. We crave feedback. We, we're, we're sort of insecure that way. Or at least I am. I, don't, I, I can't speak for Jordan and Amy, but I, I just, I crave feedback. So what, what I crave most are crackpot theories. I love crackpot theories. Aluminum, hat, aluminum foil hat theories, as, as we call them. Yes. Um, you know, and and if you yeah, if you have crackpot theories, send them to us. We'd love to hear them. You can also you can send all of these things. Uh, if you have a topic you want us to discuss, please keep it, you know, concise, just so that we can something that we can actually read over the episode. But send any questions, comments, feedback, whatever to uh, Cosmere Studies at gmail dot com, and hopefully that'll make it into the show and we can talk about it. You can also uh, contact us through our PO box. Um, Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, Orem, Utah, 84097. We have our own personal projects outside of this. So, Amy, why don't you tell us what you've got going and where we can find you? So, my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp, because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. My TikTok is at Coincidence Cosplay, all one giant word. And my website is www.coincidencecosplay.com. Um, so I had three different cosplay events the last two weeks. So that's been kind of crazy. Cause that's like way more than I've done in a long time. Well, we're um, getting pictures from them. So, you know, yeah. So I, well, that's not even counting the tress, <laughs> the tress one I did. So I did tress pictures a while ago. And then I also did, I got to dress up as Lady Tremaine and take some 
anti Valentine's Day pictures. I need to put some of those up. I'm sorry. Um, no, you don't then, get to just move on. Explain. I'm sorry, I, I must know. Explain. You, yes. you said you said anti Valentine's Day, and my my brain completed is anti Valium. I was like, what is anti Valium? No. So so my it's friend strong, does evil it's, queen. It's, it's part. Of, it's a weird new uh, don't say, guess, just say no to drugs campaign where they use only Disney villains. It's really avant garde. <laughs> well, I was thinking it was just caffeine, but. No. Oh, so there's there's a, a lady who who does pictures locally, and she she does like, and you know like, gal not Galentines exactly, but uh-huh. like, Valentiney pictures, but just single ladies or whatever. And my okay. I play a character, you know, Lady Tremaine, who's the stepmother of Cinderella, and so I did pictures as her, with you know my stuffed cat and showed a little leg and fish stockings, and it was a little bit weird. Um, <laughs> Nothing, nothing scandalous. Don't worry. Um, and then what was your safe hand showing? Oh yes, <laughs> so, so scandalous, scandalous. brazenly. Um, I know. Um, anyway, and then I also the <laughs> Amy, you were saying? Yeah. Oh, but then, but then I also I went to um, your night to shine, uh, prom for special needs people. Okay. Um, and I did that as Mother Gothel. I still have some things I want to update on that costume, but it was really fun to be Mother Gothel and try that out. It's like one of my most comfortable ones, but it dyes everything that I'm wearing underneath it red, which I got to figure out how to have it not do that because it's like red velvety stuff. And so mm-hmm. it like... I didn't realize shed. velvet does that. I think it's, it's fake velvet. And so it was... Velvet. I don't know. It's... it's, it's it, I got it, it for free. Yeah. Fake velvet tends to sort of shed and and leak. <laughs> Yeah, so it. I I need to figure out how or to bleed. have it not do that. Um, anyway, but yeah, and then a blanket. Oh, and then I think it was the Jawa was the other one where I got mm. to run around at Vivian Arena. Routine. Was another Jawa who's the evil queen friend, and I got to troop around with some stormtroopers and Vader and all these other fun things. So that was really fun. Nice. So that's all my cosplay adventures, and I'm gonna actually put up pictures in the next little while. That's what I'm gonna do. Cool. <laughs> that's my big thing. All right, Jordan, how about you? Uh, you can always find me at youtube.com slash splice stream. Uh, we actually just changed my schedule recently. I'm streaming less so I can focus more on video production. Uh, I'll be streaming Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesdays are right now my persona five night. So if you're listening to this on Wednesday, go back in time and, uh, go watch those streams. If you like persona five. Um, And if you don't want to miss announcements like this, you should join us on Monday night for the live recording. Exactly. And then uh, Saturdays are my smash days where we do our Amiibo content. Um, I am currently working on, I'm actually going to be having a secondary channel where I'm going to be posting my XCOM content coming up here soon. So uh, by the next time we host, I'll have a video or two up over there, hopefully, the uh, depending upon which video I end up doing. But the XCOM content is coming along well. I got my intro done for the series I'm going to be doing which is going to be a comedic look at uh, XCOM playing through it and just laughing at my not very good commandeering of my soldiers. Commandeering? Yeah. Well, I, they'd have no choice in the matter, so I feel it's actually more appropriate than commanding. <laughs> hmm. Arr. Arr. There's no way I just pronounced it wrong. That didn't happen. <laughs> All right. Well, and as for myself, uh, one of the things I've been doing, this is just sort of a side hobby that I don't actually have any content around. I've been cooking a lot lately, and I've been really, really enjoying it. Uh, yesterday, I've been really enjoying it as well. <laughs> yesterday was obviously Super Bowl Sunday, so uh, and I have a lot of people with celiac in my family. And so I tra- was trying to make stuff, stuff gluten-free. I had a really great recipe for, for meatballs. The recipe actually just called for frozen meatballs and then put it in like a, a sauce mixture. Um, but those tend to have wheat and gluten in them. They have breadcrumbs to, as a filler. And so I used, I made them from scratch instead. And I used a uh, rice panko. Um, I also made Brazilian cheese bread, which is naturally gluten-free. And I also mm. made chili. It was just, so I am loving cooking right now. It just makes me happy. So that's my side hobby that has nothing to do with content I'm making. Um, I do also have another podcast with my friend Dylan though. We talk about board games. It's called the innkeeper's table and new episodes come out on Friday mornings. Um, our most recent episode was our top three worker placement games. And the next episode coming back or coming up is a, uh, it's a mailbag episode. And we're answering a question about Rondell games, games that follow a Rondell is sort of like a, an action circle that you move around and kind of, yeah. So we'll be talking about those 
in the next episode, which we haven't recorded that one yet. So I don't know how good it is, but I hope it'll be good. I feel I feel good about it. Let's go on a limb. I love this play. I'm excited to be a part of it. For those of our listeners who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you can't become patrons, we would love it if you would tell people in your life, the Cosmere fans in your life, the non-Cosmere fans in your life who are looking for a good series or a good podcast. Um, just let, let them know about the show. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. And if you toss us a good review, wherever you listen to us, we would absolutely love that. You can also head over to store.streamelements.com slash Cosmere Studies and buy six merch. Uh, this shirt is not available, but it will have this logo on it. So, <laughs> um, Final thoughts. Um. So the first session of the the Cosmere Tabletop RPG was really fun. I think our next one is going to be the 18th, I believe. I think it's a Saturday. So it's coming up. Yeah, so it's this coming Saturday. um, And I will put up the time that it's going to be at um, anyway. But also, if people are on TikTok and they want to follow me, then you can get me closer to 1,000. I think I'm almost a 400. And once you get to 1,000, you can actually have like a link on your thing and you can have... You can do lives because TikTok apparently is like, no, no, until you get a thousand, you don't matter. You don't get all these super simple things that should be easy. So but, but if you're there, th- that would be cool. Final thoughts on today's on this, topic. <laughs> on this topic, um, it's going to be crazy in the future. And I'm probably going to guess half the stuff wrong. But that's that's fun. It's if, fun. You guess it, if you guess it half wrong, you're going to be uh, quite proud of yourself. <laughs> I know. Frankly, Because that means you're half right. Yeah. Yeah. When when it comes, if there's anything I've learned from doing the title belts that we've done, if you're even half right, you are killing it. You're doing yeah. great. But yeah. No. My final thoughts is I can't wait to get back to the future. <laughs> great, Scott. <laughs> That's heavy. Uh, special thanks to our patron producer, of Mims Laundry Service. Ancient ancient techniques to solve futuristic stains. In addition to live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. Next time, we are going to be taking a look at the correspondence between Hoyt and Harmony, but we're going to be doing so with the additional context brought in from the Lost Metal, because that definitely changed some things. Uh, So join us for the discussion in two weeks on Monday, February 27th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, Thanks for listening, and remember, there's There's always always another another secret. secret.